take these laws and end up on an ego trip of self-righteousness, they become a modern-day Pharisee. And those people can lead you astray just as much as the anti, the no-law theology can lead you. Both can lead you astray away out from a relationship with God. It is the middle of the road that you're supposed to stay on, and you're supposed to have some common sense here. You know, I had, we had a guy one time in our church wearing tassels, and I'm not kidding you. I am not, I wish I was kidding you. I wish I, I, wish I was making this stuff up, but it's the truth. His tassel, is, he had tassels is like tassels on Viagra. It, they started out about that long, and, and, and as he kept coming, they got longer and longer. And before it was over with, they were a foot long. Tassels on Viagra. I, I wish I was making this stuff up, but they got longer and longer and longer. And, uh, you know, ego trip, ego trip. My tassels are longer than your tassels. I am more righteous than you are. Okay, all right. Now, as far as wearing stuff, put this in your pipe and smoke it. You want to wear something? Let's wear sackcloth and ashes as a nation. If you live in America, I tell you what America needs to put on, sackcloth and ashes. We need to repent of our vile sins in our government, in our media, in our entertainment, in our music. We need to, repent. We need to be wearing sackcloth and ashes. If we want to wear something, we don't need to be walking around with stuff hanging off of it and say, hey, look at me, I am religious. Oh, no, we need sackcloth and ashes. But even that can be turned into an ego trip. I say that. Better, better be careful about what I'm saying, wear sackcloth and ashes. But even that can be turned. Humility can be turned into an ego trip. I'll never forget, there used to be a guy in our church. I don't know how he got, uh, who asked him to speak, but he, was, he had a pretense of humility. And he would approach the podium like this. He'd, he'd come up like this and, and just bent over. And, and everybody thought he was humble. You know, oh, he's so humble, he can't even hold his head up. I wanted to kick him in the, you know, and, uh, and, and, and say, wake up, guy. Quit, quit, quit the facade. Quit the fakery. Quit, you know, there's so many people out there, they're like an onion. You just start peeling away and there's nothing left. There's, it's all a facade. It's all a facade. As Jesus said, you know, they're, they're full of dead men's bones, tombs, it's full of dead men's bones. I mean, it just, just, you know, it's nothing there. It's nothing real. Now, what I'm saying is none of this stuff has to do with a relationship with God. What we wear, how we say God's name, a relationship with God consists of several things. Number one, you've got to have the Spirit of God. And it has to do with overcoming, overcoming sin, dealing with the lust of the flesh, treating others with respect, treating your fellow man with respect. And, you know, I, I don't like religion. You know, I did a little thing not long ago, uh, many years ago, you might be a Pharisee. Since we're on the subject of modern-day Phariseeism, let me, let me just give you some of these. I can send you all of them, by the way. If you need a concordance to do a word study on pronouns, you might be a Pharisee. Uh, uh, if figuring out the name of God takes longer than 60 seconds, uh, you might be a Pharisee. If God will not answer to the name Father, you might be a Pharisee. If determining pork byproducts become a compulsive, obsessive disorder, you might be a Pharisee. If your theological studies are on, the, on determining the depth of the sea of glass, if you agonize over where, whether Adam had a navel, you might be a Pharisee. Yeah, I mean, the stuff people talk about when it comes to religion, most of it is totally irrelevant. I was at a restaurant one time, there's a couple of religious nuts in there, and they were talking about in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. It's the resurrection chapter when dead people come back to life. And this guy had figured out what in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, that it was so many milliseconds. And I'm thinking, man, he missed the point entirely. He's reading about the resurrection chapter. And he's got it figured out that what in a moment, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, there's so many milliseconds. I mean, we're talking about when dead people come back to life. Christ returns, raise the dead. That's something to talk about. I don't give a rat's behind how quick it is or how many milliseconds it is. I do not care. Okay, you might be a Pharisee. If you can't figure out when the sun sets, you might be a Pharisee. If words like new moon, conjunction, equinox, and round disc are a regular part of your vocabulary, you might be a Pharisee. If, if a fly lands in holy water, is the fly sanctified or is the water polluted? If this is an intriguing question, if you like that question, you might be a modern-day Pharisee. More importantly, if you know the answer to that question, you are a modern-day Pharisee. Yeah. Check us out on the web at isthatreallyinthebible.com.